Hello everyone and welcome to another very nice game we'll be showing from round 11 of the 2021 Tata Steel Chess Masters. It's Arian Tari versus Andrei Esipenko. As we mentioned in the previous video, we said that Esipenko has uh, excellent uh, chances of winning the tournament because he already went through all of the big names in the tournament and he, he is the only one who defeated Magnus Carlsen. So let's see how he does with the black pieces against another Norwegian uh, Arian Tari. Uh, without further ado, let's check it out. So Tari with the white pieces opens with e4. Sorry about that. Uh, we have e5 by Esipenko, uh, knight to f3, knight to c6, and bishop to b5. Uh, Tari goes for the for the Rui Lopez. We have a6, Morphe's defense, and now bishop to a4. And now uh, Esipenko goes for d6. This is the so-called modern Steins defense. You want to play g7, uh, g6, develop your bishop to g7, and so on. Uh, we have castles here, knight to f6, and now rook to e1. Defending the e4 pawn, we have bishop to d7, and now c3. Preparing to strike in the center, also uh, creating an escape route for this bishop here. So g6 as planned, and the white immediately goes for d4. Uh, we have bishop to g7, and now knight b to d2, going after some standard knight f1 to g3 or e3 ideas. Uh, castles by black, and now bishop to c2. And here, uh, there are some 10 games in the database that reach this exact same position, most... Uh, Notable one being uh, Krishnan Sasikran versus Hikaru Nakamura. It was from uh, 2019 World Blitz Championship. Nakamura defeated him uh, by playing Rook to E8. But here we have Knight to H5. And it is already as of move 10 that we have a completely new game. So Esipenko preparing to bring the Knight over to F4. Maybe F5 will be an idea in the future. And, and so on. So uh, somewhat of, a, of an aggressive approach. Uh, and here we have D captures on E5. You don't have to capture this. It's a matter of preference. You could go d5 knight to f1 then shift the knight to g3 uh, but uh, tari decides to capture once first we have captures captures and now knight to f1 uh, we have knight to f4 uh, that knight is now an excellent piece here uh, and if white doesn't want to give up the uh, dark square bishop and of course white doesn't want to do that you want to keep your bishop pair we have knight to e3 here so this knight is now coming to d5, and d5 will be uh, an excellent outpost for white's knight. King to h8, getting the king away from this diagonal. At some point in the future, we want to play f5, so you don't want to uh, constantly be looking over your shoulder. And now knight to d5. And here, uh, black cannot capture this knight. If black captures this, then you remove the defender of d5 pawn. You pick up d5 pawn, and it's... Uh, pretty much pretty much a uh, game over for black so instead after this knight to d5 we have knight back to e6 and now uh, tari just starts pushing on the king side with h4 and this is already uh, uh, somewhat of a critical moment uh, in the uh, in the game, uh, because here uh, Espenko needs to figure out how to deal with this. Of course, uh, h5 is coming, that's pretty clear. And here Espenko decided to stop it with h5. But I will just show a very, very interesting line that uh, follows what Espenko was, uh, was planning to do all along, and that's f5. f5 seems like a uh, a completely different approach, but it is a very interesting one uh, because uh, it offers a lot of counterplay for black. For example, if white continues pushing, let's say h5, you can even close up the position with f4. And if h captures on g6, you just go knight to g5. And this is a uh, this is a not a good position for white. Bishop to g4 is coming. You're gonna put a lot of pressure on this knight on f3. If captures and captures, then again you are threatening f3. Again, something you don't want to face not right away. Uh, the bishop, of course, is uh, still on c1, uh, but it is a very unpleasant position for uh, for white. And even if white goes for this trick, knight captures on f4 to pick up the bishop on d7. You're just gonna pick it up. E captures on f4. Queen captures on d7, uh, and now knight to e5. Again, uh, not not the greatest position for white. The queen is under attack. Knight to f3. Check is coming. You have to block it with queen to h3. And now queen to g6. Now definitely preparing to push f3. It's a, a very, very difficult position for white to play. So ideas like this were in the position. Uh, but instead of uh, going for f5, Isbenko goes for h5. And now this means he's going to opt for, for a defensive setup with f6. To keep that knight and bay and uh, add additional support to the e5 pawn and he will be on the defensive so bishop to e3 and now f6 uh, we have b4 tari now continues pushing on the queen side and knight to e7 now 
trying to trade off this uh, this strong knight on d5, queen to e2, and now uh, instead of trading off the knight, knight to c8. Now preparing to shift the knight to d6, and from there you will also have uh, a lot of, a lot of presence in the center. So here c4, uh, just cementing that knight on d5, also grabbing more space on the queen side. Queen to e8, now maybe with ideas of bishop to a4 to trade off the, the light square bishop here, uh, but Tari doesn't mind, he doesn't block it with a4, he just continues with c5, clears the c4 square for his queen, uh, also grabs more space here on the queen side, and now we have a5, here Yesipenko wants to open up the a file for his rook, uh, we have a3, and now knight to a7, the knight is now coming to b5. Uh, and then maybe in the future even to d4. So bishop to b3, and now knight to b5. We have bishop to c4, now uh, with a double attack on the knight here, captures on b4, captures, and Esipenko trades here. We have rook captures, rook captures, and now again, uh, a very tricky position. It's hard for black to find the move. Uh, like we said, the knight is already attacked twice. Rook to a5 will add a third attacker to the knight, and you're not going to you're not going to have all that many squares. Uh, for example, if black plays something like uh, bishop c6, you're going to go after the knight, and the knight now has to move. The problem is, after you move this knight, uh, white will just capture it. Bishop captures, and it, you cannot capture with the knight. If you capture with the knight, white just trades and then picks up the c7 pawn. And if you want, if you want to keep an eye on the c7 pawn, then you have to capture with this pawn, and then the rook just goes back. Rook a1 to d1, and then you're going to pick up the d4 pawn. Uh, or black will have to further weaken his position. So it's uh, it's uh, not not a lot of moves for black in this position. So uh, to uh, take the heat of the queen side, is Benko decides to strike on the king side, and here he plays f5. Uh, but as you'll see, this is uh, not not the the greatest. Uh, <laughs> route for, for black to take. So here e captures on f5 and now not rook captures on f5 but rather the brave g captures on f5 which is incredibly uh, uh, hard to imagine that black would go for this as the h5 pawn is now uh, how will you ever defend this this h5 pawn? Uh, yes, the queen is defending it for now, but that can change in a second. Here, knight to g5 and knight to g5 is now a great move for white because uh, Again, what do you play here for black? Uh, I'm just going to show you what happens if black plays uh, some sort of a careless move. Let's say black plays f4. Uh, feel free to pause the video and try to win this uh, hypothetical position for white while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on uh, spotting, of course, the beautiful rook to a8. Of course, that's also for those of you who just want to enjoy the show. Uh, and now white, black simply resigns. The queen is under attack. You cannot capture the rook. If you capture the rook, uh, it's just a very simple uh, queen captures on h5 check. And that's it. King g8. And now queen h7 or knight to e7 will be checkmate. So what happens if you don't capture the rook? Let's say you go something like queen to g6. That's also not going to do because of knight to e7. And now the queen cannot remain on this diagonal. Uh, so the queen has to move somewhere. You have to guard the h5 pawn. Queen to h6 and now comes knight to f7 with check. The rook cannot capture. Of course, the rook is now pinned. So you have to go king h7 and now just bishop to c2 check and the queen has to block. Queen g6, and now bishop captures is checkmate. So this is uh, not the way to go for black, but it's uh, extremely hard to defend against this. How, how do you defend against rook to a8? It's not uh, not some sort of a, a position that can just be played. You, you, you cannot play something like bishop to c8. White will still play this and then capture the bishop. The queen will still have to leave the defense of the h5 pawn. So here, uh, Ispenko tried knight to g5, eliminating the knight h captures on g5 and now f4 now there's a, an attacker less so he hopes to survive with queen to g6 but still uh tari just goes for rook to a8 of course again you cannot capture if you capture now yes there is no knight but still queen captures on h5 uh and now there's nothing to be done if king to g8 just queen to e7 checkmate and that's just it you don't need the other knight so instead, after rook to a8, we have queen to g6 as planned, and now comes rook captures on f8 with check, bishop captures, and now uh, bishop to d2. 
uh, now uh, you, you don't you don't want black to capture this and you are still threatening to capture the knight on b5 and there's no good move here once the knight uh, moves away from b5 uh, and uh, frees up the c3 square the dark square bishop is coming here and not a lot can be done about this or what was played in the game knight to a3 but now the much sneakier bishop to d3 attacking the queen and what do you do here? Uh, you have queen captures on g5 now with some ideas of pushing maybe f3, time, trying to go for some sort of a queen trade. Now just bishop to e4 and there is no defense against uh, all of the threats that white has. So it was in this position on move 33 that Andrei Sipenko resigned the game and with it uh, excellent chances of actually winning this tournament because there is nothing more to be done here checkmate is being threatened once you defend against this now you go bishop to c3 and that's it there's no way to defend against bishop captures this whatever you play any move runs into bishop captures here and now it's just game over next move you're going to play queen to h7 checkmate uh doesn't matter what you do uh, because of course the the queen will not be able to capture and if you capture the light square bishop here which is also possible then bishop captures comes with check and only then will you recapture here and then you're just up a queen so yeah after queen to e4 uh Ispenko resigned and an excellent victory for ariantari and now we are going to check out the standings after 11 rounds there are two more rounds to go so anything can still happen these are the standings so let's check it out uh anish giri is still leading the tournament with 7 out of 10 with two more rounds to go uh followed by with six and a half andre Esipenko. you can see that if Esipenko uh, drew or won this game he he could have been uh, in first place fabiano corwana and alireza firuja who drew their insane game uh, also both on on six and a half out of ten so trailing by uh, by half a point and uh interestingly uh, uh just wanted to mention when uh, fabi missed that uh, knight captures and g2 move uh, someone mentioned in the comments that uh, in the interview after the game fabi actually said that he was considering uh, uh, to, to play this move for some 40 minutes uh, before he decided to play uh, c6 so it, it, it definitely was not a missed idea uh, with six, uh, Jan Jordan Van Forest. With five and a half, Magnus Carlsen. With five points, Pental Harry Krishna and Nils Grandelius. With four, Jan Krzysztof Duda, Maxim Vashiel Lagrav and Ari Antari. Uh, Radoslav Wojtyszek and David Anton Giharu with three and a half out of ten. And Alexander Donchenko with three out of ten. So there we have it. Those are the standings. Two more rounds to go. We'll see what happens. Uh, our leader Anish Giri faces uh, Alireza Firuja today. So it's going to be uh, it's going to be an epic battle, I imagine. Uh, but you know we'll, we'll see what happens uh, so yeah i uh, hope you guys enjoyed it uh, i would like to thank um, uh, uh, michael alexandre de la Air, uh, anil kulkarni john nicely uh, thomas gallagher and robert steinberg for a contribution to my channel thank you a lot i really appreciate it uh, as usual you can check two of my previous videos here thank you all for watching and i will see you soon uh, continuing the coverage of the tata steel uh, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world so thank you all i will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day